This is part two of Scotch yoke and rotary motion to linear motion mechanisms. I'll start with this one first. On this one, on the back side here, I have this crank attached to this green gear and that turns this large blue gear. This smaller yellow gear is pinned to the outer edge of the large blue gear. On the front side of the yellow gear is this pin and that rides in the slot of this slider and the pin is slightly offset from the center of the yellow gear. This red gear is fixed and does not move. As the blue gear rotates the yellow gear is in contact with the red gear and it moves around it. So as it gets out to this edge this pin is moving this slider laterally this direction but since the pin is offset from the center, as it gets to this side, it also moves the slider even farther. So at each end of this, the slider speeds up because of this offset pin. So as I turn this crank, you can watch this slide, and you'll see that it speeds up a little bit when it gets to each end. This one has a wheel with two pins near the outer edges. As this pin comes around, it's going to hit on this tab. When it pushes on this tab, it moves the slider to the right. Just as the pin passes the tab here, this pin is catching on this toggle, raising it up and moving the slide in the to the left. As the wheel comes around it again catches this tab moving back to the right. This one has a pinion or a partial pinion with teeth on it. A rack on the top and a rack on the bottom. You see the rack on the top is slightly offset to the right and the one on the bottom is slightly offset to the left. So there's one more tooth on the bottom here, one more tooth on the top here. As the pinion is turned, this tooth catches on the upper rack, moving this rack and slider all the way to the right until this tooth disengages with the top and then the bottom one engages moving the rack to the left. This one has this crank on the top and that is connected to this pulley on the bottom which turns this belt connected to this pulley and that pulley turns this red gear in the middle. So when I turn this crank it turns this red gear which turns these two green gears. On top of them are these orange pinions and they are keyed to the shaft along with the green gears so that the timing is always correct. So I turn the crank you can see that this pinion engages with the rack, pushing it to the left. And at the end, it disengages here, and the other side engages with the rack, 
pushing it back to the right. And then this one pushes it back to the left again. On this red gear, there's this stop here, this black stop on the end, and it's timed so that this pin on the rack, when the rack reaches the end, it catches it so that the rack doesn't advance too far. This one is a Scotch yoke dual piston design. It has the wheel and the slide like a Scotch yoke. There's also two connecting rods, pistons, and cylinders. So they turn the crank, the pin slides through the slider, moving the connecting rods and the pistons back and forth in the cylinders. This design could be used as a pump to pump water or other liquids. It could also be used in the opposite way if it were used on it as an engine where to push on the piston, sliding the slider in one direction and then back in the other. This has two wheels in line with each other connected at their outer edges with this pin. This wheel moves in this oval and moves the slider left and right. So as it goes around it's moving the slider to the left and then back to the right. And you can see that here that goes left and right. This one in this oval moves it up and down. So as they work in tangent, the end of this goes through an elliptical motion. This one is called a double dwell because it dwells or pauses on each end. In part one of this series I had one that was similar that would stop on one end but not the other. This one the pin moves through the slider moving in one direction and then because this is concentric with the wheel there's no movement on this end until the pin reaches the top, engages, and moves it in the other direction. And then again, there's no movement on this end. So it dwells on each end. This one is similar, but it has a slot on either side and then the top and bottom are radiused to match the wheel so the dwell is in the middle instead of on each end. This one has a three-point star instead of a wheel. So as I turn this star wheel, it will engage with these cam followers 
pushing this slider left and right. So you can see as it goes this direction, it's going to push it left. And then at this point, the other side will push it back to the right. And that's it for part two in the series of Scotch yoke and rotary motion to linear motion mechanisms.